Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Video. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys, and I got another video. I got another video. Yeah, I got another video. Uh, this was a dream. This was a dream. Um, the next video, if I don't get another dream, will be this study of something I saw. And wait for it, it's going to be good. Anyways, um, okay. so I had a dream. I was in this big room, very large room. And... Um, there was a partition to my right, and there's a huge screen, TV screen, okay, and all these chairs, but it wasn't a movie theater, but it was more like, um, we have a bar, restaurant kind of thing here in LA, it's called Barney's Beanery, um, and uh, shameless plug for that place, hope I don't get in trouble, copyright, whatever else, but what they had is a, uh, a section where there was like bench seatings and tables and then this huge screen so you can watch like a football game or a sports game or something else so here I am to the left of the screen because the screens over my shoulder my back is to the screen I'm not looking at it okay all these people are watching and kind of in a uh, zombie days mode of just staring at it not really paying attention to what's going on around them and I have this little like propane bar, propane grill. And I have this pan, I have a lid, and I'm cooking veal, of all things. Um, I haven't had it in so long, right? And veal's kind of expensive, right? It's not a, uh, it's more of a delicacy. And, uh, and next to me, there was like this uh, oven that pulled down with a door. And there's big piles of thick meat steaks like this long and that thick and they're just piled on top randomly you know and the woman threw in another one and I said you know that's not going to cook right um, the meat in the middle and at the bottom aren't going to get cooked and she goes I don't care which is really weird because I'm like don't you want to do it right it was this apathy all in the room so then I'm I'm cooking you know, and um I turn and look behind the partition that has the TV in front of it, and there's more steaks just stacked up on the ground in a big pile. And I'm and I said to this woman, I'm like, um, either you need to cook those, freeze them, or they're going to go bad. And she's like, Meh. I didn't understand this to me. It's like I don't, you know, but why would you waste food? And why was there so much beef just being wasted? So then, off to my left, there's a door, and I walk in, and it's a kitchen. And there's this countertop, sinks, uh, um, and cooking stoves and everything else. And this, these women are there. They look Hispanic. And um, I, I told them again, hey, uh, you know, about the... And it was like, there was an invisible bubble around me. Nobody could see me. Nobody... Care. They just kind of walked around me like I wasn't even there. I'm like, all right. Um, and in one instance, my father walks, walks by and he's coughing, coughing, coughing. And I said, hey, you really need to use like an inhaler, like for asthma and stuff. And he says, no, I'm fine. But he kept coughing. And I'm like, okay. Um, I didn't understand it. Not because I didn't also understand why he could see me, but nobody else could or nobody else reacted. Um, so then I walk back out to the room where the pan was, and um, I had this like handheld uh, like temperature gauge or a thermometer, right? And had a little screen on it, about that big, and I was holding it, and I could point it at people. But instead of a temperature reading on it, like a number, it was almost like a radar screen. And every time I pointed to somebody's forehead or whatever, there was a red dot. Red dot, red dot, red dot, red dot, ton of them, right? I pointed at a little kid, young kid, four or five, whatever else. She had a blue circle here, like a blue circle, and then a white dot, white dot in the middle. And I'm like, wow, okay, that's weird. And I pulled the scanner away, everything looked normal, like a normal people paper. I put the scanner back on, and yep, I could see the dots, right? And all the ones that were kind of like just staring at the TV screen over my shoulder, 
had the red dots on them, didn't care. So then I'm panning around, panning around. I got to two other kids. And that was it. And there was a room of, I don't know, 50, 60 people there. Um, and there was only like three kids that had the, the blue circle with a white dot on them. You know, and I pan over to an adult. He's got the blue circle here and a white dot in the middle, but then he had a candle on top. A white wow. candle. And it had a white flame on it. And I'm, I'm like, okay, let's keep scanning. I found two adults that had that. And they were not facing the screen, they were facing towards the crowd. And they were trying to help them do good things. You know, I could feel in my spirit. It's like they had the heart of love trying to help these others. And the other, the people with the red dots, they didn't care. They didn't listen to them. They didn't, it was not important to them. So I'm like, oh, this is really strange. And then I, I thought, well, at first, when I saw the people with the red dots, I'm thinking, oh, the, the India, the Hindus, right? They, they put this dot on there. Don't know why. I thought, of, oh, pituitary gland, right? Um, so then I realized, wait, the red dot's a mark, and the blue circle with the white dot there is a seal. There's a seal of God, and there's a mark of the beast. And I went, oh, boy. Okay. And um, I turned around, walked behind the partition, and there was a desk there with a chair. And I kind of sat down. You know, I was a little disheartened because it was like, uh, this food was getting wasted. People weren't paying attention. Um, just things were not right. And it didn't seem like whatever I said or whatever I did didn't seem to make a dent in these people. They were just completely, um, I wouldn't say brain, brain dead, but zombified. You know, oblivious to everything. Like hip, hypnotized. That's a really good word to say. And then this other guy walked over me, over to me. He says, hey, can I sit down? I go, sure. And then I realized, wait, you can see me? Right? Um, and then I woke up. But there's so much hidden meaning in this dream that's happening currently now. You know? Um, so if you guys have any uh, interpretation or understanding of this, put it in the comments. Love to hear it. And um, one way to get into heaven I say it every single time, and it's like I'm repeating myself, I'm repeating myself, but it's true. There's only one way into heaven, Yeshua, the Son of God, by His blood. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. His life is eternal. His truth is eternal. The way to Him, we should know the way. People say, how can we know the way? And I think that's in the book of John or in the Gospels, right? And he told Martha, when he, before he raised Lazarus, I am the life. I am the way. Right? No one comes to the Father but by him. No other name is given to man by which he may be saved. It is the Son of God's name, Yeshua. Okay? Some know him as Jesus, but that's not his real name. It doesn't matter. I mean, he'll, he'll look at your heart, you know, but I think he's closing the door to the ark. And it's going to happen soon. Um, and everybody, um, what did they say? I think it's John. They were drinking, eating, drinking, and being merry until the, the day that the flood came. You know? And didn't know about it. And then said, hey, let me in. So, don't wait the last minute. Seek him while he can still be found. Um, ask him to make himself known to you. He will. You know, sometimes subtle things, sometimes big things. Uh, there's been many things, times in my life where I shouldn't be here, but I am. So he has a purpose. He has a reason. Each and every one of us was created for a purpose, for his good pleasure. Uh, love, love you guys, guys and I'll see you in the next video. video.